In today's lecture, we're going to talk about meiosis and allele segregation. The first thing I want to walk you through is the differences between mitosis and meiosis, which we've talked about before. Then I'd like to illustrate and have you understand each part of meiosis. Understand at the superficial level how it's like mitosis, but then understand, you know, deep down how it's really not. It's a very, very different uh, beast. The final thing I'd like to talk about is allele segregation and relate it to Mendelian inheritance. If you're looking for extra lectures, uh, supplemental help, extra practice problems, uh, you know, things of that nature, just, you know, uh, elaborations on things we've talked about in lecture and lab, I'd recommend these three apps uh, from the uh, iTunes store. Uh, they're all free, and, you know, they are sort of nice, uh, uh, you know, different things uh, to help you uh, with different items in this course. Molecules, any molecule you want to throw up there, it'll put the molecule up there, uh, three-dimensional ball and stick, uh, you know, uh, design. You can rotate the molecule around to see what it looks like. Genetics helps you with crosses, so practice with Punnett squares. And then Gene Screen is a nice little app where you can put on uh, any type of uh, genetic abnormality and see exactly how, um, you know, the, the, the method of inheritance. So in other words, is it autosomal recessive, autosomal dominant, uh, sex linked, etc. It also helps you learn a little bit more about, uh, you know, the uh, symptoms and uh, any possible treatments for different types of uh, disorders. Okay, so let's go ahead and focus on meiosis. This slide here shows you the entire process of meiosis. Remember, whenever we say meiosis, what we mean is the production of gametes. That's what meiosis is. That's the point of it. So in humans, that's producing eggs or producing sperm. So meiosis is happening inside a single person, right? So it's happening in one of you. We're not talking about sexual reproduction yet. Although we say, you know, meiosis is for sexual reproduction, it is, but that would happen, happen after this slide, right? So this is just the production of gametes. You'll notice here that the names that you see with meiosis are very similar to what you've seen with mitosis. That's why it's very easy to confuse the two on a superficial level. However, again, the implications are very different. Meiosis is divided into two stages, meiosis one and meiosis two. Let's go through them together now to show you the entire process. So in meiosis one, we start with a substage called prophase one. And this substage is divided further into different tiny, tiny substages. Leptatine, zygotine, pacotine, diplotine, and diakinesis. You want to know what happens in each of these subphases. And what I do to remember this is I remember a little mnemonic. I remember the phrase, uh, little zebra plays double deuces. Sounds weird. I know it's sort of crazy. Uh, but, you know, the weirder the better. It helps you remember what they are. So, Again, little zebra plays double deuces. I think of a little zebra gambling in Las Vegas. And I'll tell you why I think of this. Helps me memorize the names. Um, little, obviously the L is for leptatine. Um, a zebra is an animal, and that comes later, right? But, you know, leptatine sounds like leopard, another animal. Helps remember what it is. Little zebra, the Z is for uh, zygotine. The P is for pacotine. Little zebra plays, right, is for pacotine. Uh, play, I think he's packing a hand of double deuces. Not a very good hand in cards, right? But, you know, that's what I'm thinking. Um, little zebra plays double, double, die means two, double. So it helps me remember exactly what it is, right? And deuces, uh, double deuces. So you could see that here, you know, deuces is diakinesis. And I really think of it, uh, diakinesis, I think of that because I think of the zebras packing double deuces and they're playing, you know, double deuces in any card game in Vegas. Having two twos is not very good, uh, so, you know, the zebra's probably going to get in trouble with the mafia and get killed, and so he'll die. So, anyway, that's how I think of it. So, I know it's sort of goofy, right, but, you know, it helps you remember, a little mnemonic that helps you remember the order of these, because otherwise it's hard to, to keep them separate. So, what happens? In leptatine, chromosome condensation begins. In zygotine, homologous chromosomes pair, undergo something called synapsis, synaptis, excuse me, synapsis, synapsis, it's hard, hard to say, <laughs> synapsis, uh, and, and uh, they form structures called bivalence or tetrads. Um, remember, homologous chromosomes, we're saying if it's number one from the father, the homologous pair would be number one from the mother. Pacotine, what happens then? Well, the chromosomes at this stage are fully synapsed, and something called crossing over can occur, where basically you have... Um, pieces of the father's chromosomes breaking off and exchanging with pieces of the mother's chromosomes. Very, very interesting. Obviously, this happens between homologous pairs because you have to be exchanging equal genetic information or equal genes. The next stage is diplotine. 
And in diplotene, what happens is the centromeres from homologous chromosomes start to separate, right? So as those tetrads start to separate, and the, the attachment points that you see after crossing over occur, the part where the chromosomes are stuck together basically still, are called chiasmata. Finally, in diakinesis, what happens is chromosome condensation is complete, and the chiasmata are moving all the way to the ends of the chromosomes, and eventually by the end of this, the tetrads will have separated. So you can see that we've added an extra layer of uh, genetic diversity here, right, by switching information between uh, the father and the mother, uh, mother's chromosomes. Okay, so I'd like to walk you through the phases here of meiosis 1. So we just talked about prophase, right? This slide is just dividing it into middle prophase, late prophase, you know, uh, we're just going to stick with prophase and the substages I talked about before. Um, you could also see here that uh, we have a cartoon image here below, right, of what's going on on each slide. And then we also have here sort of an, actu an actual uh, microscope image to show you what the chromosomes actually look like. Okay, so in prophase, we get pairing of homologous chromosomes. Uh, crossing over can occur, what we just covered on the previous slide. Um, late prophase is just showing you the chiasmata that are available here. Okay, let's go to metaphase one. You can see the picture that was on the right on each of these slides is being shifted to the left, right? So, uh, so this is old information. But let's focus on metaphase one. So in metaphase one, what you see is you see one of Mendel's principles. Let's say the red chromosomes are from the mother, the blue are from the father. If this X was number 15 from the mother, this X would be 15 from the father, right? Because homologous chromosomes line up across from each other on something called the metaphase plate. Um, this would be another homologous pair. You'll notice that crossing over did occur, right? This red chromosome has a little bit of blue on it right here, so crossing over did occur. And this demonstrates one of Mendel's principles. So think about it. Which one does it demonstrate? Is it independent assortment or is it segregation? After you think about it for a little bit, you'll realize that this does demonstrate independent assortment. In other words, uh, the mother's chromosome is on the left for this pair. The mother's chromosome is on the left for this pair didn't have to be that way though, right? We could flip the red and the blue here and leave these the same and that's the independent assortment part. The fact that the way that these, this homologous pair divides has no effect on the way this homologous pair divides. In anaphase one, you basically get separation of homologous pairs. That's pretty straightforward. Telophase one, what happens is uh, you uh, get, you know, pinching in of the membrane, the cell starts to divide. In meiosis, interestingly enough, uh, you don't get the cell completely dividing like you do in mitosis. Rather, the cell remains in a stage like this, right, and the nuclei never quite reforms all the way, and you proceed directly into prophase 2 during meiosis 2. Okay, what's the earliest sub uh, stage of prophase 1 where um, we can get crossing over to occur usually? So little zebra plays, pacotene is where most of crossing over occurs, but little zebra, zygotene is actually the earliest that it could happen. You may have noticed that on the previous slides. That's the earliest it could have happened. But if, so if that's, so three is the answer for this. Now if I did say, when does most crossing over happen, you would probably say pacotene, number five. Okay, another little question for you here. So if arrow A is pointing to chromosome number nine from the father, then what is arrow B pointing to? And percent, you know, pretend these arrows are pointing perfectly where they should. The answer is actually two, number nine from the father. You might say, well, why? Well, remember, this is one chromosome, this X, but it's one duplicated chromosome. So if this half is number nine from the father, so is this half. The exact same thing, just duplicated. Ask you another question. If this X is number nine from the father, what is this X? That's number nine from the mother, right? It's the homologous pair. Okay. We talk about meiosis two. These are the events that happen, but let's look at them in motion. So prophase two, nothing much going on that we're going to talk about, honestly. But metaphase two, what happens is you can see it looks just like mitosis, right? So the chromosomes line up right on the metaphase plate. Uh, some people call it the equatorial plate. And what's going to happen in a second is the sister chromatids are going to divide. And you see that right here. Anaphase two, the sister chromatids are separated. Now they each become their own chromosome. So there's one, two, three, four chromosomes in this cell. There's one, two, three, four chromosomes in this cell. Then what happens in telophase two is that you get further, uh, um, you know, um, invagination of the membrane, and eventually these are going to divide to produce four cells. If we're talking about a male, these would be four sperm. 
we're talking about a female, there's actually uneven dividing of the cytoplasm. So you'd think there'd be four eggs, but there's not. There's actually one egg and three things that are called polar bodies. Uh, to my knowledge, we don't know exactly what happens to these polar bodies, but they're not viable eggs. Uh, I think most people think that they're just reabsorbed by the woman's body. Okay, so that's a little tour of mitosis. Let's go ahead and talk about allele segregation, sort of the implications of mitosis, excuse me, implications of meiosis, and relating it to Mendel's, um, to Mendel's principles. Okay, so how do we summarize meiosis if we wanted to summarize it? So this is how we summarize it. So we start with a precursor cell that is a 2N. It's diploid. There's two of each numbered chromosome. So you can see, if this is number one, there's two number ones. If this is number two, there's two number twos. What happens is, in the first meiosis, the first um, meiosis division, it's called the reductional division. In other words, you go from 2N to N. Uh, we only have one number one now. We only have one number two, right? So each of these cells are, are, are N. They're, they're, they're not diploid. Um, they're haploid. You can also see that independent assortment happened during this time, right? We could have had two reds here, but we have one red, one blue. Uh, that's independent assortment. The second uh, division of meiosis, so meiosis 2, is the equational division. And this is where you have sister chromatids separate, and you end up with only two strands uh, per each cell. And these are our four sperm, or four eggs, you know, which really be, would be one egg and three polar bodies. So some statements we can say here. What does this demonstrate in the Mendelian sense? Well, segregation of, alle uh, of chromosomes, excuse me, uh, segregation of chromosomes mirrors segregation of alleles. And independent assortment of chromosomes mirrors independent assortment of different genes. I'd like you to think about those statements. They're not too deep, but, but you know, there are some implications uh, when we say those statements. Okay, so what's happening during these meiotic divisions? I want you to ask yourself, which of these, which principle does this slide demonstrate of Mendel's? Is it demonstrating segregation or is it in, but, uh, demonstrating independent assortment? What it's demonstrating is it's actually demonstrating independent assortment. And you can see that by the fact that this is saying, here's one scenario, here's four possible sperm that can be produced. Here's another four possible sperm that can be produced. Here's another four possible. In other words, if we reran the movie, we reran time. Here's another four possible. Notice in the first one, all the maternal chromosomes are dividing together. So maternal number one, number two, number three, right? All the paternals from the father are staying together. You can see here that we're getting a mix and match. That's the independent assortment part. So it's showing you all the possible variation that you could get. So, so far we've talked about crossing over, adding genetic information, variation. We've talked about um, independent assortment, um, you know, adding genetic variation. Which sperm matches with which egg would be another way to increase genetic variation. It's good to sort of jot these down. Uh, another one would be uh, which organism mates with which organism. So there's many, many levels which we can get variation through sexual reproduction. This slide here is showing you what happens during crossing over. And this is very important, something we'll talk, touch upon in future lectures. When you have two genes that are linked, and when I say linked, I mean they're on the same chromosome. So you can see that gene A and gene B are linked. They're on the same chromosome. When they are, uh, you would always see, in this case, big A and big B stuck together forever. So you'd produce this gamete up here. And then little a and little b would stick together no matter what, and they'd be on this gamete here. So if two genes are completely linked, you can see you're not getting genetic diversity all the way. You're not able to foil all the way, right, because you're not getting independent assortment. However, if you do get crossing over, then it's possible to see these middle two gametes. These are the recombinant gametes. So the outer two, we call them the parental, or we call them non-recombinant, either one. These we call recombinant. These are recombinant gametes. They're produced via crossing over. If you'd like to see sort of independent assortment in action, uh, there's a very nice animation you can click on. I'm not going to do it now, but you can click on it. It can walk you through uh, the animation. It's very, very helpful to see how independent assortment happens. Okay, so today's lecture we covered meiosis, allele segregation, uh, and uh, that's it for today.